Hi, and welcome to another food review. We're at the Mustard Seed tonight, which is a southern themed restaurant, which is a little bit different from what we usually do. There aren't a lot of southern restaurants in Reno, so it should be interesting. So, I'm Mike, and this is... Hi, I'm Annalise. And I'm Matt. <laughs> and so, because this is a southern themed restaurant, we figured that we'd try some southern themed foods. Makes sense. So I was gonna split some fried green tomatoes with Annalise and Matt, what were you getting? I think I'm gonna get the deep fried okra, actually. Having never had it before, I'm, I'm a little curious. Yeah. All right, sounds good. And for my main dish, I was thinking of getting the uh, New York steak on a hoagie. And so it's kind of something a little different. Um, I'm not sure how southern it is, but it looked good, so I think I'm gonna get it. And Lisa, what are you gonna get? I'm gonna go for Patsy's Dirty Gumbo because it sounds wonderful, and you can't go wrong with gumbo. Gumbo's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Matt, how about you? Uh, I'm gonna go with the catfish dinner. Absolutely. I've, uh, I've only had catfish once before, and I've been told that the southern way is way better, so uh, I'm hoping it's gonna live up to its reputation. The most recent business to open is this one, which is really interesting because then bringing in another restaurant, um, you'd feel as though all of these places would be competing, but they're not because they all have different hours and different types of food. Mm. And as someone that works in the same shopping plaza, there is never parking. So this, that's a <laughs> that great is time true. for all of these businesses. You, you resort to parking no. illegally. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody here did that. Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, disclaimer, yeah. <laughs> This yeah. is really nice too in this district because one thing you do notice about Midtown is it's very like paleo and you know see, you see a lot of the food trends like the mm, diet trends yeah. in this area. That is, you know, that the is true. The gluten-free, paleo, yeah. the you know there's all these different diets that you see supported here and then this is a restaurant that's going to serve a lot of the foods that we really love deep down but we're always told we can't eat and so this is a great comfort food location. That's pretty good. I like that. I like that a lot. Fried green tomatoes are good. Mm -hmm. It's like so. super oily and just soggy. Yeah, and this is really good because it's light and it kind of like crumbles apart um, in a way that allows you to still taste the tomato, which is great. Oh man, this wasabi is really good. Mm -hmm. Again, never having had it before. Ani tells me that it's a member of the squash family and after having had it, I can kind of see why. It's got this like um, buttery tenderness to it, which is really nice with the crispy, obviously, breaded exterior. Um, and it's served with, they called it velvety wasabi. And so we've yet to discern what actually makes it velvety, but it's for sure wasabi and it's uh, it's mixed with something though. And it's real good, <clears throat> it's really good. Um, I tried the okra and it was really good, but we got the um, <coughs> fried green tomatoes, which if you've ever seen the movie, you know fried green tomatoes are really good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so basically they're tomatoes um, that are sliced, I think heirloom tomatoes, sliced and then deep fried in uh, uh, some kind of bread batter and sprinkled with uh, ranch dressing and tastes like lemon juice, could be lime, I'm not sure. Uh, and it's pretty good. I like it a lot. No, they are really, they are really good and I've never had them before so this is interesting. They're surprisingly tender, I feel like a lot of the times when you think of um, fried vegetables or any sort of any sort of vegetable that's fried, you always picture it as being kind of soggy and having that really oily aftertaste. And this doesn't at all. It's really light, actually. It's it's surprising how how like light it mm -hmm. is for uh, and it's hot too. I know that that's like that sounds mm -hmm. really obvious because it's fried, but like my okra is you know as as small as it is, it cools down pretty quickly. No, that, these really it's like their it's yeah, it's warm on the inside. It's but still has that um that citrusy sweetness we were talking about. Yeah, I, I really like it. So I got the New York steak in a hoagie and it came with um, onions, melted cheese, and what tastes like horseradish. And it's very good. Uh, I've taken a few bites of it. Uh, it's messy, but that's to be expected when you have so much sauce to, to uh, stuff ratio. <laughs> Very scientific term too. <laughs> so the steak looks like it's uh, cooked um, a medium well to well done. Uh, there's not much pink in it, which is fine. I tend to prefer my steaks a little bit more on the well done side. Not completely well done, but... Uh, and there's a good blending of flavors here. The horseradish does a good job of uh, offsetting the sweetness of the onions 
and uh, it's layered such that it, it works really well. Um, so, as a sandwich, I'm pretty impressed. It's quite good. Um, I haven't actually tasted my collard greens yet, but I think I'll do that now. Mm. So, these collard greens are actually a little bit less bitter than I'm used to. They're actually kind of sweet. Mm. Perfect. So, I ordered the dirty gumbo, and it's really interesting, actually. It's um, definitely got a rice base. Um, it's got pieces of shrimp and chicken and sausage, and it's got a little bit of a bite to it, which I actually really like. Um, it's really, it's a complex flavor, but it's one of those things that you would order in the winter time when you were trying to find something warm and comforting. Um, and it's really good. The spice level isn't overpowering to the dish. Like you can still taste the flavors of the chicken, you know, and the shrimp, and then there's celery. Um, but it's got a really good flavor, and it's not like a typical soup because it has a lot more chunks in it. Um, so it's actually really substantial. So, and then that uh, came with cornbread. And as someone that grew up hating corn cornbread because of the texture, this is actually really, really good. Um, it doesn't have that like dry, uh, gritty texture that I'm used to that I actually don't like at all. Um, this is really soft and warm, and it came with the butter that you pour over the top of it, typical Southern style. And it's nice, it's got this kind of thick, um, crispy crust and a really soft interior that's kind of dense. Um, so just these two alone is a perfect meal for someone my size. Um, but this is fabulous, it's great. All right, so um, I got the deep fried catfish. And uh, I was saying that I've, I've only had catfish once before and I've had it in the, I suppose, the Vietnamese style. Um, and I didn't really like it. It was really, it was really slimy the way that I've had it prepared before. and. Being a white fish, and um, you know, I, I guess I wouldn't uh, pretend to know what all river fish taste like, but uh, it seems like that's kind of the kind of the uh, signature style of catfish. I would say it does have this kind of sliminess to it, but this uh, this breaded coating um, and similar to the okra is just fantastic. It's it's really dry. I squeezed this lemon on top of it, and the lemon has completely disappeared into the breaded crust. Um, and so having that crunchiness, I think, is at least I enjoy it a lot more. And that came with, um, they have the loaded mashed potatoes. I think this is just the mashed potatoes and the country gravy. And uh, it's actually, I found to be a really good side with the catfish, because it does have that, like, buttery, um, actually there's a lot of pepper in this as well, so having that spice alongside the mild catfish really, really offsets it. And uh, so other than that though, it's, you know, kind of what you'd expect of traditional country gravy. And uh, that also came with my cornbread, which I haven't had a chance to try yet, but I will try right now. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't slather my butter on like Omni did, but... Uh, mm. You can have the starchy, kind of really corny side of cornbread, or you can have the um, sweet, more, uh, it's kind of more like a cake, honestly. Um, it is. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm liking that a little bit better than, I suppose, any other way that you might have it. So yeah, all in all, very good. Um, overall, this is a restaurant that I would not recommend if you're not hungry, just because everything that we were served today was really, really um, intense and very filling. It's with any kind of food like this, you're you're getting a meal that's going to fill you up. Um, so definitely do not come here on a first date where you're going to pick at your food because you're nervous of what he or she will think of you. And definitely come here with an empty stomach because there's a lot of food and it's it's all very very hearty food. Um, but yeah, it's fabulous. I from somebody that hates cornbread. Their cornbread bread is fabulous, and I'm very excited about that. Um, and their gumbo is really great because it's filling, um, and I definitely can't eat this whole bowl, which is usually unlikely with me with soup, so this is awesome. I recommend it. So, um, I loved my sandwich. Uh, it was really good. It was a little bit overpowering towards the end. Um, the, the horseradish flavor kind of got a little overwhelming, but overall, I really enjoyed it. Um, Again, yeah, I don't think this is like a great first date place. Uh, the food is really heavy, really messy, not the kind of thing you want to do on a date. But again, yeah, if you're hungry, I, I would say come here because the, the food is, is really filling. And if you are on a diet, this is a great cheat day place. <laughs> um, I haven't eaten all day and it's now like 8 p.m. and I'm filled up by that sandwich. Um, 
and I eat a lot, so that that says quite a bit, I think. Uh, that was really heavy, so. <clears throat> so, um, so I didn't really know what to expect, again, never having really had real Southern food before. I think if you're like me and you just kind of like to try new culinary experiences, this is an awesome place to check out. Um, as far as my actual dinner went, I'm a huge, huge, um, I almost said texture nerd, but I suppose that's not the right term. Uh, texture is really big for me with what I like to eat. Um, if it doesn't have the right kind of texture, or one that I guess I'm used to, I find I, I have a hard time really getting it down. But like I said, I haven't had the slimiest Vietnamese catfish probably ever prepared, and then coming here and having this, um, it, it totally changed my perspective on at least the one dish that I ordered. Um, I think everybody kind of knows what to expect when it comes to southern flavors and, um, you know, southern sides, and they're definitely one to kind of, this place seems like one to load you up on. I think you get two sides with your, two sides with your meal, and uh, yeah, so I don't think you could go wrong with anything that you picked, honestly, uh, especially my, my okra, my appetizers, um, I'll definitely be coming back for some more, some more fried vegetables in any form from this place, so uh, yeah, I like it. Hi guys, I'm Mike, this is Annalise, this is Matt, thanks for watching, please watch Eddie's other videos, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Hi, this is another- <laughs> <laughs> We're good. <laughs> I'm I, I'm, again, I don't think we really go wrong with them. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you got that. I have Nora and Shannon. Brian Brooklocker. <laughs> Michael Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs>